This mouse was unexpected, but I'm glad they finally made it, because in my opinion, it's a better shape than the Death Adder. The reason I didn't recommend the Tournament Edition was the sensor. They were using a laser. If you want to know my thoughts on that, check out the Landshead review link in the description. Now onto the new Mamba Elite which has the top optical sensor, 20 customizable lighting zones, and apparently the durability has been increased to 50 million clicks. One thing is for sure, this mouse is pretty. The lights look amazing, smooth and easy to set up in the software. More importantly, it's now functional, which means we have a new large mouse in the top 10. So here's a tour of the shape compared to the Death Adder. It's basically the same design, but with all the extra flare and edges removed or smoothed out. You could say it's a safer design because it should be comfortable for more people. Some people had an issue with the front right side of the Death Adder. Not only the sharp edge, but there also isn't much outward curve. The Mamba has a really similar shape, but the flatter sides, along with the increased height of the rubber, feels like a better grip. The new smaller hexagon pattern actually feels really nice. Quite grippy. I like it, but maybe smoother would be better so dust doesn't collect in it. The rest of the plastic has more grain in it too, so it feels easier to grip overall. And now for a quick tour of the shape. It's made for right hand use, has slight comfort curves for the thumb, and also the fingers on the other side, and also some comfort curves in the buttons with some angles on the sides. I find because of the flatter shape, my index finger feels a bit better over the thumb buttons. That's compared with the Death Adder, which goes in a bit too far. So I think for larger hands, this should be more comfortable too. Here it is next to some other mice, so you get a general idea of the size. Very close to the Death Adder. The button slope is gradual, with the hump in the middle, making it most suitable to palm and claw grip. But it can be used for fingertip grip too. It has a height of about 4.2 centimeters, length of about 12.5, and the width of the fingers is about 6.4 centimeters, depending where you measure, while the Death Adder is about 6.2. So it is a slightly wider mouse. That was a little harder for me to aim, but that means it could suit wider hands. Generally speaking, the measurements are still the same. I'd recommend 18 to 20 centimeters for palm grip, 18 to 22 for claw, and 18.5 to 22 for fingertip. And using the 60% of your hand measurements rule, it would suit 21 by 10.7 centimeters in claw and fingertip grip. It might be a little small for palm grip at that hand size. Please keep in mind, this is a general guide. Everyone is different. And if you hold the mouse differently from what I've shown, then it might not be as comfortable. You have to find what's right for you. Now for the buttons, here's a listen to the clicks for general quality. Left and right feel fairly light, and they're quiet. I had no accidental clicks, but heavier fingers might. Middle click is lighter than most, but still with a bit more resistance. The problem on mine is scrolling up is loud and shaky. Scrolling down seems fine, but that wheel problem might just be on mine. Also, having the wheel click left and right is a nice touch. Always good to have more commands on the mouse. The side buttons have low travel and feel really good, but unfortunately they have that buzz sometimes when being released. Again, that could just be my copy, but I think it might be on all of them. The DPI buttons are somewhat in the way for me, because I did have a few accidental clicks, but larger hands should be able to get a better grip on it, so they should be okay. Overall, I'm happy with the quality compared to the Death Adder, but could be improved further as always. In the latency testing, neither test is accurate, but they paint a similar picture. The buttons are close, 
if not the same, so no problem on the performance there. As for the sensor, it's meant to be using Razer's 3389 with a maximum DPI of 16,000, but I'll be doing this testing at 1600. This is the top optical sensor on the market and has much better in-game performance than any laser sensor, so I'm really happy Razer switched over to this one. It's amazing. I can't make it spin out even with my fastest flicks. Even when tilting and slamming it down, which can cause a problem on some, it still didn't lose track. Zooming in, I can track pixel by pixel, and no matter how slowly I move it, it detects the movement. It does it smoothly too. I can't find any acceleration or deceleration, or any delay either. The liftoff distance is about 1 dVd, so that's very low. And in the line test, I see nothing unusual. All looks really good, just like the Death Adder Elite. And this is why the Mamba is finally usable in competitive play. Top performance is always from the sensor. And now I just want to make one request. I would love to see this sensor on the diamond back as well, along with modular buttons so we can choose which side we want them on. That's the mouse I would want to use. So make sure you let Razer know if you would like this too. When tapping and shaking it, it seems okay, but the wheel on this one is a little loose. The cable is braided, smooth and flexible, and it handles the pushback test really well. In fact, these latest cables that Razer are using, I've been really happy with them. Definitely some of the best on any mice. The feet are very similar to the Death Adder, almost no change there. They feel good to me, but that's personal preference. The weight is about 100 grams. That's with a bit of cable, which is a little heavy for competitive mice these days, but still so close to the Death Adder, it's really not an issue. I would like to see Razer make lighter mice though. The Diamondback should be about 80 grams. For the software, it uses Razer Synapse, where you can make your own profiles, and of course rebind the buttons. Hypershift included, so you can essentially double the amount on there. It has the usual keyboard, mouse, and media functions, along with macro and some extras. Overall, the software seems fairly well laid out, and it's easy to use and the DPI steps go up in 50. Even the lighting seems easy enough to set up, allowing custom gradients along with the usual presets. You can also calibrate to your mousepad, but unless you experience a problem, I would leave this on default. And I did try this on another computer, and I think we're going to have to keep the software installed for this one. Now some highlights while I give my conclusion. My only real issue with the Mamba Tournament Edition was the sensor. They've fixed that, and now my only issue is the loose scroll wheel on my copy. But I can handle that. The Mamba Elite combines top performance and some of the most beautiful RGB lighting on any mouse. It's the full package now and I would definitely use this instead of the Death Adder. After requesting this change for so many years, I'm really happy we finally have it. But again, I would like to see the weight around 90 grams or lower. Either way, it's a top performing mouse with a really nice shape and makes any desk look better. It's a bit big for me personally, but as you can see by the highlights, I had some good runs with it. So if it sounds like what you want, I can now recommend it. But everyone is different and you have to find what's right for you. It sure is pretty though. Special thanks to Razer for sending this out for review. And if you want to help support the channel, I'll leave the usual links in the description. And as always, subscribe, like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.